Hi, I'm Julien Tesson, researcher at Nomadic Labs, and I will present you Albert, an intermediate language for Tezos smart contract. Uh, I will first present you our target language, Mikkelsen, and then give some general idea on the Albert language, and give the full specification of the language and uh, the, some insight on the compiler architecture. And I will finish by uh, showing what we want to do next. Uh, so Mikkelsen, the target of our compiler, is the language of the smart contracts interpreter in the Tezos blockchain. It's a pure stack-based language which allows resources consumption tracking, uh, but with high level types and primitives, like list sets, maps, with their, uh, with iterators and a high level function on that, uh, which allows for a better programmability. And also we have, of course, domain specific operation to access the Tezos ledger. Right? You can get the balance of your current contract or transfer token, create new contracts. The full language can be, uh, is presented in the links I, I give here. And so why do we need an intermediate language? The thing is the stack is hard to reason with, it's easy to target efficiently because, uh, and each compiler will, will have to do this job to map value to position in the stack. So we want a simpler language with safe transla translation to Mikkelsen and possibly with safe optimizations. So this is the idea behind Albert, which is to provide this intermediate language with a formally verified compiler to Mikkelsen. And how do we simplify the language? We abstract the stack with variables, which is the work for compiler, but also for abstract interpreters, for our logic framework. So that's the job we do. We don't um, duplicate the values that, that need to be duplicated by the, on the stack before being used. Uh, we just keep track of the resources so we each use a variable will consume it and this is ensured by a linear type system and so we gave some other abstractions like we generalized pair into an array record and some type into an array variance and a first step toward having libraries and um, separate compilation was to authorize the definition of global non-recursive functions. Uh, so what does the, lang the language look like? An Albert program is just a sequence of assignments uh, where unused variables have to be explicitly dropped, where branching is done by a pattern matching on variants, and we also have loop instructions, of course. Uh, each assignment assigned either to a variable, a standard, or a, to a pattern which can distract a pair or a record into multiple variables. On the right hand side of the assignment, we can have any expression that use variables, record construction, uh, literal values, operator, uh, like predefined arithmetic or domain specific operation, for example and we can, can do function application or value duplication. Uh, at the top level, what we defined is a series of custom type definition and function definitions. And at compile time, which we specified explicitly which function correspond to the main entry point of the Mikkelsen program that we want to generate. So as I said, the, the typing is a linear typing that ensures that all values are consumed, meaning that each time we have an assignment of it, here, we assign X to Y. Uh, that means that we should start in an environment where we have X in the environment. 
and we it leads to a new environment where x has disappeared and we have y uh, instead we could have duplicate the the value of x which le le lead to a new environment where y is a pair of value and this pair could also be explicitly distracted into two variables y and z the destruction of a variable uh, is also an instruction which remove x from the typing environment. Other examples are here where we use operators that consume value uh, variable like x and y here are consumed by the addition so at the end they, they are no more in the environment and we have z here which is in the environment. All the language has been specified using the, the, the OTT tool, which allows to define syntax, typing rules, semantic rules uh, in uh, multiple files, one file per construction of the language. This allows to just take a subset of the language, a fragment of the language by taking a subset of the files. And for this subset of files, we can automatically gener generate a parser, a manier parser, and an AST, AST type in OCaml in Coq. And it also generates the typing and semantic rules in Coq. And also the documentation, which uh, uh, shows the grammar and the rules in LaTeX. The drawback of this tool is that uh, the generated code is not always really readable, especially for the semantic rules and uh, some typing rules. And uh, also the parser uh, generates an AST that is not decorated with locations, which is a real pain when you want to have uh, explicit um, error message like, message like uh, you have a type error at line X so you cannot have this with the generated parser. The, the architecture of the compiler is the following. So we have all these OTT files that specify the language uh, that generate rules in a, a coq inductive. And we also have the, uh, defined uh, a typer function and a compiler function in, in coq which take the, the AST uh, produced by OTT. Of course, the long-term goal is to have those functions proved correct with respect to the rules that are extracted from OTT. And we'll also have uh, the parser, which is generated in, using uh, uh, many. And we extract the typer and the compiler. We glue it with the parser in OCaml, and this gave us our compiler. Um, the compiling itself is in first inlining type definitions and sorting record feeds and variants to be able to unify types. Then we have the type checking itself, which mainly ensure uh, the linearity of uh, variable usage. And then we have the compilation to uh, Michelson instructions, uh, which also do function inlining. Uh, as a target compilation, we use the untyped AST of Nishokok, which is a, a Michelson interpreter written in Coq that has been presented last year at FMBC, and which is mainly used to uh, verified uh, smart contracts, Michelson smart contracts. Here, each step of our compiler return in an error monad. Of course, if the type checking uh, succeed, we shouldn't fail in the compilation, uh, but that still re remains something to be proved. Um, the compilation right now is quite naive we maintain a representation of the stack, which is each variable are in the stack in sorted in lexicographic order, uh, which allow us to know at which position is each variable. And then we move the needed value on top of the stack for each expression, apply the operator, 
and then move back the result at its expected position, which depends on the variable name, which is not maybe the most efficient thing to do, but it's a proof of concept and it, it works. As a conclusion, we have a modular formal definition of Albert in OTT and thus in Cork. And we have a type checker and a proof of concept compiler for Albert written in Cork. Uh, what we want to do next is many things. On the language, we want to design a hard logic uh, to be able to reason directly on Albert programs. And we, of course, want to have a complete proof of subject reduction and progress for the typing and semantic rules. We have a small proof for a fragment of the language. Uh, we would like to have annotation of type that would allow to control their translation into uh, Michelson data types. That would be very useful to produce programs that can interact with other smart contracts written in Michelson. On the compiler side, we want to prove the compiler correctness. We want to be able to plug optimizer and then uh, having a certified checker that check that the optimization is correct. And also we would like to build a certified decompiler, which would ensure that any program that you can write in Michelson has a translation somewhere, uh, so, somehow in, in the Albert language. That's it. Thank you for your attention.